We've all gone out to shoot on days when the sky was just bland. How can we deal with that in post? Well, let's find out. Hi, and welcome to episode 90 of Understanding Dark Table. After the last episode, 89, I got quite a few comments from many of you. Some of you were a little distressed at my uh, having hit a bit of a slump and running out of ideas. And so I've been inundated with quite a lot of ideas. And I thought in this episode, I would address just one part of a quite lengthy email I got from Tony Hamilton. And in relation to, he was talking about me doing demonstrations of how I use Darktable rather than just, you know, a, an episode on a particular module, which has been, you know, the, the large part of what this channel has been comprised of so far. And he then goes on to say, your episode on grass was a suitable example. It went some way to discussing the why, when, and how of selecting and applying a set of modules in Darktable to a particular image. I can immediately think of a parallel requirement how to change a grey sky, representative of a typical summer day here in the UK, to make it marginally more interesting by darkening the dark bits and vice versa. My natural method is to use two instances of the exposure module with a parametric mask, one focused on the dark clouds, the other on the light patches. Is this the best or even sensible way to achieve this effect? Or are other modules better suited to this task? If so, why? So with all that in mind, I thought I'll dig out a couple of images with some grey, bland, horrible looking skies. And these are just a couple of outtakes from my recent trip to Western Australia. And we'll see what we can do. Now, Tony mentioned using two different instances of the exposure module. My inclination is to actually not go for an exposure module. I guess it comes down to how well did you nail the exposure at the time of capture? And, you know, were you shooting RAW or JPEG? Obviously, you know my thoughts on JPEG already. Uh, I think you're throwing away a lot of opportunity to touch up an image after the event by shooting JPEG. Now, if you are someone who has been shooting for 30, 40 years or more, and you are super confident that you can nail your exposure and your white balance every single time you press the shutter, then hey, have at it. Shoot JPEG all you like. If, like me, you don't shoot often enough uh, and occasionally you get it wrong, then shooting RAW certainly gives you the opportunity to address things later on if you need to. Now, in this particular instance, as you can see from the histogram, that's actually looking pretty darn good. In terms of exposure, it doesn't really need any adjustment. But in terms of trying to do something with that sky, I would actually lean towards a local contrast module with probably a drawn and parametric mask in order to isolate the sky. Now, I'm reasonably lucky with this image in that the border between what is sky and what is not sky is relatively well defined and therefore it shouldn't be too hard to isolate that with a drawn and parametric mask. So let's just dive on in and see how we go. I am going to start by clicking on drawn and parametric mask in my local contrast module. That immediately activates the module and does apply local contrast to the entire image. I will then scroll down and turn on the mask overlay. Everything goes yellow. That tells me that at the moment the module is affecting every pixel in the image. So what could I use to isolate that sky? Well, my natural inclination is luminosity because the sky is generally lighter than everything else. It's 
couple of bits where it's questionable, but for the most part, the sky is the lightest part of the image. So let's start with the lightness channel and we want to get rid of anything that's dark. So we start dragging this bottom triangle up the slider until such times as we start losing parts of the sky, which is there. So I will now drag that back a bit and we've got a pretty good delineation there across all those rooftops, the street light, even the trees. That's isolated the sky pretty well. And so really now, other than, other than you know, obviously the, you know, this fence here and this top of the uh, building facade down here, we should be able to isolate this with a drawn mask. So I would go for the path mask, click on that, and I'm going to go control click up in the top left hand corner. I am going to go control click down here. Control click, if you don't remember, gives you a hard 90 degree corner on your on that control point. And then I'm just going to scoot through here. I'm not going to worry about that single bit of guttering on that building there. I'm really not stressed about that. And I'm just going to draw some points all the way through here and all the way across here. This is where it gets a little bit tight. And oh, that that is going to be challenging, trying to get in there. So what I'm going to do right for the moment, I'm just going to ignore it. I'm going to control click over here and control click up there and right click. And that has implemented the drawn mask on top of the parametric mask. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of selection still happening here on the top of the fence. And that is because of the feather, which is the dotted line guide along here. So what I'm going to do is just grab all those nodes and I'm just going to drag them up. This is the rather tedious part about working with uh, the masks in Darktable is just trying to grab these nodes. Sometimes they can be uh, rather problematic to get hold of, but if you just take your time, you can usually get there. So I will fast forward the video and I'll talk to you in a sec. Okay, so at this point, I've contracted that mask or that, so, sorry, that feather right in close to the mask. I've zoomed in on this bit. And this is the reason I didn't try and do this when I was drawing the initial part of the mask. You can't zoom in whilst you're creating the mask, but you can zoom in and add nodes to a mask that you've already drawn. So what I want to do is control click on the main line and that will allow me to add a new node. So I can just go in there, then I can go control click to add another one and put that up there and control click to add another one and control click to add another one. And now I can come down here. And again, I've got to, what on earth is happening there? Sometimes these nodes behave in rather unpredictable ways when you're trying to edit this tight. Okay, there's a tiny little bit there. I don't think we're going to notice that. And I'll now add another node there and take that up there. And now I've got to zoom out again with my control and mouse wheel. This is the unfortunate part. I can't zoom to an area that will put this boundary in the middle of the screen, which makes it rather awkward trying to get to this node over here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just take that up a little bit higher. And if I now zoom in and have a look at that again, there's just a tiny little bit of the mask uh, or 
a few pixels, shall we say, that are included in the mask that we don't want. I could probably just go one more node and then drag that up. And there we go. That's pretty much, pretty much nailed it. So we've got rid of everything that is not the sky. Or the other way around. We've isolated the sky, if you like. Depends how you want to look at it. Okay, so now we've got the sky, we can turn off the mask overlay and I will turn off the display of the path. And now we can come back up to our local contrast controls and we can then do as much contrast adjustment as we want to, to bring a little bit more drama to that sky. I would recommend at this point that you turn on your clipping indicators because certainly with the local contrast module, you could very easily start to clip the uh, highlights in your sky. We could try backing that off. That's not actually helping. So we're going to have to just back off the, hmm. Okay. There has to be a better way of doing that. And it will probably come down to using a blend mode. Which one you ask? Good question. Let's see if we go for a darken blend mode that will allow me to crank the detail on the local contrast module without clipping the highlights. And if I do want to bring in a bit more of the highlights, I can bring up the highlights there. Actually, just as a thought, let's try one of the contrast enhancing modes. Let's try overlay though. Wow, that's not clipped? Really? Wow. Okay. No, that can't be right. Wow. Okay. Although the clipping indicator isn't showing me that clipping is happening, I feel like I'm losing a bit of detail in the clouds there. So I'm thinking I might actually go back to the darken mode and then just hit that harder. I'm wondering, could I get away with doing a second instance of the local contrast module with the blend mode set to overlay and then just get a subtle balance between the two. Let's try that. So I will middle mouse button on the icon there to introduce a second instance of the local contrast. Straight away, I can see there's a little bit of clipping happening in the highlights, but that's because we haven't done any blending yet. I will go raster mask and go give me the mask I was using in the local contrast module originally. That is only going to give me the drawn portion of the mask. It won't give me the parametric version of the mask, which would isolate along the tops of the trees and the tops of the buildings. So it means anything we do in this second instance of the local contrast module might also affect those bits that were inside the drawn portion of the mask in the first instance of the local contrast module. Does that make sense? I hope so. Just to make it clear, oh, can we not? No, we can't. We can't see what that mask is picking up. But if we go to the mask manager, we can see local contrast, path three, because that was the third path that I drew. There it is displayed that's showing me where the path is, but you just have to imagine that in yellow for yourself if you really wanted to see it yellow. I don't need to, so that's fine. I'm just going to turn that off because I don't need to have that displayed anymore. Okay, so the idea was we were going to set, set this to overlay and we were going to crank this up. We've now got lots of drama in that sky, but now because I don't want to lose any detail in those highlights, I'm just going to back that off just a smidge. 
And so now we've got two instances of the local contrast module and without them, we were, how far back do I have to go here? I have to go back to step 10. That's where we were before. And this is where we are now. Now, it hasn't brought any color into the sky. I honestly don't know that on an image like this, it's even worth trying to bring color into the equation because it's pretty obvious. It was a cloudy sky. No one expects to see color when you have thick, heavy clouds in your image. But when we get to the second image, we will do something a little bit different. So in terms of simply introducing a bit of contrast and drama to, well, certainly a sky like this, Tony, this is the approach I would take. But in terms of trying to get some drama and contrast into the sky, that's the approach I would take. All right, let's move on to the second image. This is the pub in town. And yes, it's the only pub in town. It's a small country town. Uh, and yes, if you look closely, you can see that it's the Bruce Rock Hotel. Yes, I was born in a town called Bruce Rock. Yeah, yeah, you laugh all you like. Uh, don't ask. I have no idea whether that's why I was named Bruce. Anyway. All right, so this particular sky. Again, we want to isolate that sky. And again, I think the best method is going to be using a parametric mask and using the luminosity channel. Uh, simply because the sky is pretty much the brightest part of the entire scene. So, there's not as much potential contrast in the clouds in this scene as there were in the other scene, right? This is much more, you know, with the exception of these little bits down here in the distance, the majority of this sky is just a flat grey softbox. It really is, you know, it's like shooting with a softbox under cloud like this. So we could, in this instance, get away with trying to push a little bit of color into it and maybe convince the viewer that it was either cloud that was not quite as thick as it looks here and that maybe it was blue sky shining through some thinner cloud, or maybe we could just try and pass off the idea that there was blue sky. How would you do it? I would actually use the Colorize module. So if we go to the Color tab, go to Colorize, again, I am going to start with, I'm just gonna start with Parametric Mask for now. And again, I will turn on the Mask Overlay so I can see what I've got included in the module and what's excluded from the module. And again, we are on the luminosity channel. I'm just gonna grab that bottom triangle and just drag this up until we start losing the sky. And any second now, ooh, 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 this is working well. This is working well. And there we go. Over on the left-hand side, we started to lose some of the sky. Okay, so we just grab the top triangle and we push that back to the left. And as you can see, we've now picked up some highlights on these uh, hand railings and upright posts here. And we've got some sky that is reflecting off the wet concrete down here. So at this point, I would then go, okay, let's make this drawn and parametric. And now I can go once again for the path tool, go control click, control click. And now I can just come through here, come down here and across through here, control click, control click, right click. And we have now isolated just the sky. Okay, so we can turn our mask overlay off, turn the path indication off, and now it's simply a case of what color do you want your sky to be? Well, I think it's pretty obviously we'd want a blue sky, 
So I would be inclined not to go too deep into the blues there. Don't default to looking at the deep blues. Sort of aim more for the, the cyans here. It's much more realistic. Now, no, it's not looking realistic in this image just yet. But, but in terms of actual sky color, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking from an Australian perspective and what I'm familiar with. So, you know, your part of the world might be a whole different ball game. But um, yeah, I'm thinking sort of somewhere here, just below the dark blues, sort of around the cyans is probably a better bet. Now, that's not too bad, although I feel like it might be stretching the believability a little bit. So I would probably just back off the saturation just a touch to something like that, around about 40%. For me, that at least introduces a little bit of color to the sky. Uh, it certainly stops it looking like one massive big gray softbox. Your, you know, what you consider acceptable might be to absolutely crank the saturation to stupid levels. I don't know. And, it, and it's going to depend on the image that you're editing as well. So, you know, uh, feel free to experiment according to the image that you've shot, how much cloud you're dealing with, and what kind of a look you're going for overall. Like I said, for me, I'm thinking somewhere... Why are you not responding? Let's just go... Oop, let's go 0.4. And for me, that's reasonably believable. We could maybe go 0.45. Yeah, I could live with that. And yeah, I honestly don't think that there is enough detail in these clouds to even bother with trying to uh, increase contrast. I think it would be a lost cause on this particular image. Uh, like I said, on the other image, yeah, absolutely. There was enough information there. You know, we had some dark spots, we had some bright spots, um, and obviously a rain shower at the time. And that collectively gave us something to work with. So, Tony, I hope that that has given you some ideas, mate, about how to deal with your dull, grey English summer skies. Um, there's probably... You know, a multitude of other ways you could tackle this in Darktable. You know, there are other ways to introduce contrast. You could use a levels module. You could use a curves module. You know, I mean, you know me. I love my curves. Um, and I deliberately didn't go to curves because that's what I always show you guys. Uh, but certainly the local contrast module would certainly do the trick. Uh, as you saw here, I used two different instances and some different blend modes. Um, yeah, so look, I hope that that has been informative uh, and, and answered some questions for you, Tony, and I hope somebody else gets some value out of this as well. There's a whole um, story behind why I shot this particular photograph. Um, on the site where that fencing is, used to be the local grocery store uh, or supermarket as we might call it in Australia and it mysteriously burnt down <laughs> just after COVID hit <laughs> and uh, yeah it became quite the quite the story in this little town like to give you an idea of this town when i say it's a small town i mean it's a small town the entire shire or municipality if you like uh holds about two thousand people and living in the town i'm i'm just guessing but probably somewhere around 800 900 people it's a small country town uh and this was the only supermarket in town. And after it burnt down, the local shire uh, basically set up a temporary supermarket in the shire council offices. And they've been bringing fruit and veg and all sorts of stuff in from the nearest town. And uh, yeah, so they're running you know, a temporary supermarket out of the local Shire Council building until such times as 
you know, the town decides what it's going to do for a new supermarket. Um, were there questionable circumstances over the fire? Oh, yeah, you bet. Um, lots of questions have been asked, and I, I don't know the full details of the story, but I do know there was, yeah, quite quite healthy uh, suspicion over what caused the fire in the first place. So, yeah, so I, yeah, just had to take a photo of that while I was there because, you know, I grew up in this town in the early 70s. And uh, to be honest, it really hasn't changed a whole freaking lot in 50 years. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it was nice to be back. It was nice to get back there and, and see my family. Um. All right, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful. And any questions, comments, feedback, please sing out in the comments down below. All right, guys, catch you in the next one.